says, Dear Irvin. Oh, hey, thank you. Oh, that's a very nice introduction. We, uh, we are having an issue with Outlook 2013. Each time we're trying to search for recently received emails, like today's or yesterday's emails, Outlook is displaying weeks old emails. Oh, wow, okay. That is weird. Outlook search issue. We have an issue where with Outlook 2013. It's an Outlook 2013. It's obviously it's an older Outlook. Each time we're trying to search for recently received emails, like today's or yesterday's emails, Outlook is displaying weeks, weeks old emails, but not the other ones, I guess. So my question would be here. This is affecting multiple people. This is affected. This is actually an excellent ticket. It's affecting multiple people from what I can tell. Um, and it's not just one person. And my question would be to uh, Farman, be like, hey, is, is this just you? Or is it just, you know, everybody? Is it everybody in the company? So if the issue is just you, I would look locally and see whether you, uh, Farman, or, you know, user that you might have, because it sounds like you're an IT guy as well. I would look to see if the user is correctly performing a search. Sometimes you have to kind of assume if, if it's one person, especially if it's just one person that puts in a ticket. You have to take a look to see what's going on and then say, go ahead and show me. Go ahead and show me what you're doing. That way you would check to see if they're doing it correctly or not if they're the performing search properly or not right this is the first thing you would do right if it's affecting everybody that issue is definitely with the server with the exchange server for this for for outlook 2013 it's the exchange server so you would have to have direct access to it if you if you don't have access to it then you would have to reach out to the exchange server support or email support there has to be a group there has to be administrator that needs to look into this you know and that's what it sounds like and also says here urgency high significant large impact is significant large that means it usually means it's a lot a lot a lot of people so with just this information given we have no choice but to contact the server administrator server contact so if i were you i would get onto this right away i would get onto this right away and if it's affecting now companies have uh, d different rules about this sometimes they say well how many people are affected if you say i don't know it's five people you know if it's five people they may say well that doesn't justify us starting that doesn't justify us contacting server admins or whatnot and who am i talking about here if you happen to be tier two help desk or higher or or if you're like farman probably um, he's probably doing some kind of tech support yeah, let me know actually farman in the comment what you do uh, but you, he might be like on site he might be just a system support guy he could be a business systems analyst as far as we know. Um, like me, I'm a business systems analyst. And these issues do come to me where it's affecting multiple people. And what I would do when you when I know for sure and, and you know you just have a feeling that there's something wrong with the server, and not just a feeling, but you get this from the feedback from the users. You know, you get five people, you get 10 people but sometimes you have to contact what they call in my company it's called a crisis bridge all right it's it's a it's a bridge in the sense that there are it's a conference call it's a large conference call where there are a lot of people collaborating to fix large issues that affect the entire company or maybe large groups so when you call them and you say I only I have five people they may not start a bridge they may not start a conference line they may not start paging people to fix this issue so even if you're doing help desk tier one in the future this information is good to know to prepare you 
of what you are expected to do in the future. So, you know, I'm assuming here that it's going to be more than usually more than 10 people. They're going to say, okay, fine. We're going to start a bridge. We're going to start paging people. We're going to start waking people up because, you know, we have support groups that are in multiple locations. We have people in U.S. We have people in U.K. We have people in, I don't know, India, uh, I don't, Philippines, all over the world, right? It doesn't matter, but it's a different time zone in India compared to U.S., Right? And I'm using these two examples intentionally because there's a lot of uh, outsourcing to India and there's a lot of collaboration with India. And it works out perfectly in the sense uh, when it comes to support, you know, because sometimes issues go bad at night, in the middle of a night, and there we have a you know group that works 24-7. Well, of course, people in India are going to be awake, right? And it's easier for them to deal with than to have to wake up but they still wake up people i've been waking up in like one in the morning two in the morning and i'm like oh my god um, but it is what it is and in this case the exchange support people email support people whoever has access to these email servers is going to have to fix this if it's affecting and it is affecting multiple people i don't know what the actual issue might be if you if Farman if you are the guy who who is the exchange guy, I don't know what the issue may be. It could be some kind of indexing issue on the server itself. It could be performance issue. Look at the stats of the issue. You know, even if you just have access to the server, open up a task manager and see CPU loads, uh, how much RAM is being used. See, um, of course, you have log files. It could be a bad hard drive on the exchange server. It could be, um, you know, it could be low bandwidth on the Ethernet. Internet, uh, there could be load on that. Check all of these basic things. Uh, there are more tools to you available if you are a server admin for the Exchange server. Uh, but here's, here, here are the basic things. So you open up, you log into that server, and you're looking at this. You know, so why could slow down this? Usually, when it's when it's when it comes to indexing, and I talked about indexing a couple of videos back. Uh, it's basically caching information that's written and just basic uh, metadata and stuff like that for easier access, for faster access. It tries to cache that, and if if uh, CPU cannot, if let's say let's pretend that this is the server, if this thing is not fast enough to process all the current information. You know, even if it's like new emails that are coming through. And in this case, it's really bizarre that you're not able to search and get results for new emails because you received new emails, right? But if the server has to do some number crunching and, and do processing on the server itself, then that's probably what's going on. Um, some stuff is done. Some indexing is done locally because you do get a local OST file whenever you open up outlook it the the in the inbox itself is downloaded actually locally it should be downloaded locally so if you go to users for example here's kobo man and i want to say it's app data somewhere local maybe i think it's local under microsoft and then outlook and i don't have outlook installed in here anyways it's in here and Whenever you open up Inbox or open up Outlook locally, type in OST is created, dot OST file is created under your local profile. And that's where that stuff is supposed to be. But if it's still not working and it's affecting multiple people, the only thing you can assume is that it has something to do with the server itself. Because this in Inbox itself is supposed to be, supposed to be locally stored. But why it's getting those results and, and affecting multiple people, the issue has to be with the server itself. Unless the entire company somehow got this bizarre virus that it's causing this problem, which is re really weird. I would, however, ask you whether users are getting emails, or you're getting emails um, on time. So test it. You can say, hey, okay, send me an email. And this is just a test of latency, right? This is just a test of latency. 
and here we can do uh oh, this thing still hasn't finished uh, the check desk that's okay uh, so you can this is just to test the latency because it could be a network issue too you know if you're um, going to participate in the crisis bridge yourself and work on these issues there are many things you can check and you can suggest even if you're not allowed to do these things so check uh, latency by you know having a coworker. hey send me an email and then you're like okay let me know exactly when you send it and then you wait and you wait and you wait there is a delay time but it shouldn't be like you know three minutes two minutes you know more, no more than like one minute to, to receive an email i would i would suspect right but if it's like five or ten minutes later that you get in then there's some kind of latency issue well how else can you look at that let's open up a command line and i'm sorry guys this is getting slightly more advanced in the sense that as a, just a regular tier one help desk you may not be doing this but if you want to test latency between between a server and your computer uh, then you can do this you can do a trace route trace rt and then type in outlook.com so outlook.com is microsoft online online um version of outlook so instead of being outlook installed locally it's the online version of outlook and you see how it goes through all of these uh, all of these uh connections they're basically network nodes so it starts with your router it says here cisco and then it goes through the gateway and then it goes to the next node on the network which is now internet at this point this is outside so it says here s you know it's it's outside it's stl mo sbc global.com sbc is at&t so if you don't know what that is you just type in SBC Global, what is that? That's AT&T. And then it goes to another node. And then it goes to the next node. And it says here, request timeout. Not necessarily bad, because some nodes, uh, or I should say routers, switches, they, they don't allow a pingback. You know, they just skip over it. And then it tells you the next path it takes. So trace route, it's trace, literally tracing a route to the end server. In this case, Outlook.com. And, but what you want to look at in this case is whether the response time is fast enough. 53 milliseconds is normal at the tail end of it. The higher it goes, the longer it may take to get a response. And this will do it for 30 hops, meaning it's going to try to do it 30 times and until it gets to the, to the end of it, till it reaches Outlook.com, which is at this address. Now, if you see there's a request timeout, now see now we're getting into network troubleshooting issues here you 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 know if if you know that there's supposed to be a server here you know well you know i guess in your case it would be before before you reach at&t which is the internet but if it's still on the home net or, or i should say business network your company's network then you look at say well why does it say request timeout what's supposed to be there and this is when you would get network people involved etc 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 which I'm not going to get into here because this is a help desk ticket. But once you once you go do the help desk, you may become a network guy or a server admin and this and that. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. And again, check out the performance issues of the server if you have access to it. Is it missing memory? Is the CPU overloaded? All of these stuff can be indicators of something going on. Look at the process, uh, which process might be causing the problem. Okay, Farman, I'm going to send you, I'm going to say this, the issue is most likely with the server, if it's affecting multiple users, I thought I missed, yeah, yeah. whatever, multiple users. Uh, please see my video for suggestions. 
So I'm only doing this. This is not a proper way to contact an uh, actual user on a help desk. This is just me contacting, basically talking to uh, another tech guy who may have this issue. So I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to close it. Again, this is not a typical help desk ticket at all. I don't want you to think that if you're doing help desk for the first time that you're going to be working on this. You know, this is something for at least tier two, maybe even higher. I'm going to mark it as result. So again, notice how this is very unorthodox the way I completed this ticket. So this is specifically for educational purposes of what might happen when you become something better and higher than help desk. You know, let's be honest, help desk is not the best job you can have unless you like talking to people and you work for an excellent company, then you might love it. But help desk, in my opinion, is more of a, like a stepping stone and doing all of this, learning all of this will help you get better jobs, you know. Uh, and it's not it's not easy help desk. It's easy to resolve issues and once you have more experience, meaning more you learn things the more the thing the more things you learn the better you get it the easier it becomes that's simple as that but you know you might like it you know you might like it but if you don't and you want to make more money you move on you know everything is a stepping stone in life but if you're enjoying it and you're you like your company you like your boss you like your co-workers there's nothing wrong with staying at help desk and maybe becoming a manager or something you know i don't know Right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's long enough. I'm hoping I didn't go more than 45 minutes. I usually try to keep it around there. I, best, I wish you best of luck. Thank you for watching. I wish uh, best of luck to you and your family. Best wishes. And stay safe out there. Be nice to people. Try to help out as much as you can. Whatever the issues that they may have. Whatever you can, just do the right thing. And, and, and just, you know. Be the best person you can be. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.